This is an Awakening Zone presentation, human empowerment radio and media for the 21st century and beyond. Hi everyone and welcome to the Dr. Elizabeth Show, the place where we unveil the keys to being the most extraordinary you. I'm your host, Dr. Elizabeth Lambert, and I'm so honored and delighted that you are here. If you'd like to redefine and expand your greatest potentiality, you've come to the right place. My intention in creating the show is to provide a platform and an opportunity for people to tune in and discover the keys to living healthy, radiant, youthful, rich, joyous, expansive, fulfilling lives. Doesn't that sound amazing? And truly, this is our birthright, and this is what I wish for all of us. We are ever-expanding beings living in an ever-expanding universe. And it is the premise of my work to show that we literally have the capacity to grow younger, stronger, deeper, richer, wiser, more flexible, more radiant, more beautiful, better in every way imaginable. Body, mind, heart, soul, and spirit. This is the place where you can come bring your questions, and listen to the latest information on a variety of topics, from healing modalities that fly just under the radar to how to manifest more in less time with grace, ease, and fun. Learn more about health and wellness, sexuality and sensuality, spirituality, human potentiality, the dance of the divine feminine and sacred masculine, the quantum physics of beauty, and more. Each week, I will be inviting guest experts to join me in expanding this conversation and sharing their wisdom and insights. We are broadcasting live from beautiful Marina del Rey, California, on the Awakening Zone, the international network for Empowered Awakening. A huge thanks to Joe Rombolo and Linda and Jeff Hoppe for creating this amazing network. I invite each of you to call in and ask your questions. The call-in number is 714-364-364. 4353, or you can log in to www.awakeningzone.com, The Dr. Elizabeth Show. This is the place for you to get the answers you are seeking. And if you'd like to find out more about me and my work, please feel free to visit www.drelizabeth.com. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to The Dr. Elizabeth Show for all my listeners. All around the world, we're so delighted to have you here today. wanted to let you all know the Dr. Elizabeth Show is being brought to you by pharmacy, as in farming the nutrient-dense riches of the ocean that provide the purest, most potent superfoods on the planet. Learn what 100% raw living sea vegetables can do to help put your body in peak physical condition. Get rid of cellulite. Um, hair thinning, improve skin tone, boost your thyroid function, and increase your metabolism so that you can reach and maintain your ideal weight permanently. For more information on Sea Veg, please visit my website at www.drelizabeth.com and click on in my store and you can see all about these wonderful products. So today, today I'm very excited we're doing a, a special edition of the Dr. Elizabeth Show. I was inspired to do this show because like other highly commercialized holidays such as Christmas and things like that, Valentine's Day brings up a lot of feelings and expectations for people, both those in relationship and those who are single. So I was inspired to invite love and communications expert Allison Armstrong to come on the show and shed some light on the secrets to creating and sustaining deep, rich, loving, and satisfying relationships. I was introduced to Allison's work on several occasions by some friends of mine, and what I noticed across the board in speaking to these people is what the resonance of truth and what she shares with people. One thing that struck me very powerful about Allison is her authenticity. <laughs> this woman is real, and it's contagious. Her realness is contagious. It's just, when you're in her energy field, it feels like, Yes, that's true, that's real, and I want more of that. So this is why I wanted her to be here so I could share her with all of you. So let me share just a little bit more about my guest. Allison started her career working as an advocate for the homeless, especially homeless children. The work opened up her eyes to the grave challenges between men and women and the ways they misunderstand and miscommunicate with each other. 
What Allison discovered is that by shifting these relationships, partnerships are now possible and parents can create home environments in which children can flourish. Allison has been designing and leading transformational programs for adults for over 20 years. She founded after after studying for four years, studying understanding men, she founded and created Celebrating Men, Satisfying Women Workshops. And what she has done is she's developed with her friend Joan PAX program, incorporating the mission of I love this, altering society's culture by transforming the way women relate to men. So everyone, please extend your hearts, extend your energy field towards um, Allison. Let's give her a beautiful welcome. Welcome, Allison. Thank you so much for being here. It's really lovely to have you on the show. Well, thank you for that introduction and the things that you said in the beginning about being real and authentic. And I think um, I love that you started that way because I was raised, I was born in 1960, so um, I was I was raised in the confusion of um, feminism and feminine mystique. And that, you know, we were supposed to be mysterious, right? And and what I found in studying men is that the more honest I was with men, the more mysterious I became to them. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, the authenticity is the second most attractive quality in a woman. And when she's up, when she's up, Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the first most attractive quality? Oh, um, the first is self confidence. Okay. Okay. All right. So, All right, so go ahead. That's why I, so, so the second is authenticity. Is authenticity, and um, the more direct and authentic, the more you own you, the truth for you, the more you say what's true for you the more fascinated and amazed men are, the more in awe they are. Like, who are you? And, you know, and I was raised to manipulate and conceal and maneuver and position, and it just backfires. And if you just keep coughing it up and saying what's true for you, you know, including I'm really scared right now or I feel really insecure or I'm falling madly in love with you or whatever's true, they they just extend their hearts every time. Well, you know, it's so interesting because being in your energy field and not just, you know, every time I interview somebody, I have the delicious opportunity to, you know, study them and listen to what they teach and really be in their energy. And and, um, what happens to me is your spirit, the spirit of the people who I interview, comes to me. So I've been feeling you as I've been preparing for our show today. I've been feeling you for the last couple of days, and you're you're amazing to be around. Like, you're really fun to be around. Your spirit is really cool. And then when I heard you on the phone when we said hello right before the show, I, literally, and I just want to share this with everybody because of this idea of authenticity. I literally went, oh, like it just was like, Oh, so I can see how when we're authentic, and I've had that experience with people myself, when we're just being ourselves, the word I am hearing is delicious. It's just Mm. delicious. And in that deliciousness, everyone just wants to be around you. So can Mm. you talk just a little bit more about that? Because I love breaking up, I love shattering that old paradigm, that false belief that you have to act or put on a certain way to, quote, unquote, get a man or vice versa in getting a woman for a man. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure, I, I'd be happy to. Um, where this comes from is uh, a, a piece of our work that we would call, that we call the effects of attraction. And it's what um, the book Making Sense of Men is all about. And we... In listening to men, um, from the question that I began asking 22 years ago, what if men are responding to women, I, men would tell me about the ways they react to women and what they're reacting to and the effect that different qualities have on them and what they're inspired or compelled to do because of those qualities. Mm-hmm. And we started to see that there, there's actually two different kinds of attraction. And 
mostly um, women instinctively, so from what we would call our cave woman, from our, our human animal, the part that's that's run by fear and reaction and hormones and um, and just uh, impulses that are literally created at a very primitive level, um, that the kind of attraction that we're compelled to work towards in men, what it does is it causes them to be physically attracted. So mm-hmm. our concern about, you know, having uh, shiny, lustrous hair and getting our body to be a particular shape, um, looking, everything about how we look, uh, what that causes in men when it does, because they all have very different tastes um, that they're imprinted with and they can't do anything about it, what that causes in the man is a physical response to us. And and this was always, this was confusing to me because when I'd ask men about a woman, he'd go, oh, it's just physical or, you know, I'm just physically attracted. And I thought that meant that he was attracted to her body. He was attracted to her physicality. And as I studied them more, I found out that they were talking about themselves, that they were saying that they were merely having a physical response to her. (laughs) <laughs> that the part wow. of them, yes, that the part of them that was attracted to her was just the physical. That's why I say it's just physical. And since men don't elaborate, it's, it's part of how they communicate. They tend to not elaborate or give details, especially for anything they think is obvious, and they think almost everything is obvious. Um, they never <laughs> went on to say it's just it's, I'm just attracted physically. I'm not attracted emotionally. I'm not attracted spiritually. I'm not attracted intellectually. There's n- no other part of me that is called into play here. They never said those words. I, I had to find out the rest of the story, that when a man says it's just physical, really he's saying my heart is not in this. I'm, I have no investment. I have a purely primitive physical response to that person. <laughs> yeah, you know what's so interesting about that is that that's a, I mean, a a woman. Now, if a woman's just there just because she wants to have just a sexual relationship, then that's one thing. But you know, a woman who wants to cultivate and be and in, in safe in a relationship, that's kind of like her worst nightmare to hear something like that. Like that's like, oh, that's the opposite of what I'm actually wanting to cultivate. Well, it. Well, it's. Okay, to be a little bit more specific, in a romantic relationship, you actually want both. You know, you want him to be both physically attracted and spiritually and emotionally and intellectually attracted, which is a different set of qualities. And if a man is just physically attracted, if he does anything about it, and most of the time you'd be surprised how often men do nothing about their physical attractions. They completely manage them and... and you don't even know they're having them. I've I've learned to be able to tell they're having them. I can feel the tension they have when they're physically attracted. But mostly people don't even know that a man is experiencing that because <laughs> and, wow. they manage it so tightly. And, and the older, more mature they get, the more tightly they manage it. But it's if, if a man has the other kind of attraction, which we call charmed and enchanted, or you could call an emotional and spiritual attraction, um, he's if he's just that, so without physical, then he's going to want to be your friend or your mentor, your big brother. He's going to respond in a way that he wants to take care of you, wants to protect you, wants to make you happy, wants to contribute to you. So all those yummy things we want come with the second kind of attraction, you know, that as we already said, the first most attractive quality is self-confidence. The second is authenticity, um, which is very handy because if you're not feeling self-confident, you can just be authentic about your lack of self-confidence. <laughs> and, what a relief. And, isn't that great? Isn't that what great? A so, yeah, they're so cute. You can just say, oh, I'm just... I'm sorry, I'm not feeling very self confident right now. I just read a you know, I just read a woman's magazine or I just saw a picture of you know, someone I think I ought to look like and and you'll see the men though they will draw their swords and protect you from that damn woman's magazine. You know, and they'll start they'll start going out of the eyes, 
I swear that you guys didn't even look at that. It was it's such a stupid. And was, <laughs> they're, they're, oh, they're so adorable that way. And um, so it's, if a man is going to initiate a romantic relationship, which to him is one where he both cares about her, like which is a huge thing for a man to care about a woman. They use the word the opposite of how we use it. Care is a big investment. Anytime a man says, I care about you, you should wake up. He's spending okay. his life force on you, and you want to respect every bit of it. And and so if he's if he cares about you and he's physically attracted, that's when he would initiate a romantic relationship if the conditions are right, if the time is right. There's all kinds of other things. So either so it goes either way, just physical, just um, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual, or a combination of both. Right. And the combination of both is what we're really wanting. Correct. Well, it's what you're wanting. It's what you'd want in a marriage. It's what you'd want in a long-term relationship. Right. And what's really cool is if you understand the things that really cause physical attraction beyond, you know, the shape of your body, because it's actually sensuality and sexual energy are more attractive than the shape of your body and whether or not you have shiny hair, which... Shiny hair just communicates I'm fertile. <laughs> so it's very, very primitive. <laughs> um, so once you understand that your own sexual energy and your own sensuality, meaning that you take the time to receive the pleasure that your senses are bringing to you, your sense of taste, of smell, of sight, of hearing, of feeling, if you, if, if you take the time to feel that pleasure those cause sexual attraction. And so when, once you understand the physical part, then in a long-term relationship, you can literally have all the sex you want. Mm, I love that. <laughs> you never have to have it go stale. You can always, you know, as one man put it, one man called it the bell ringer, right? Another man put said, uh, what activates the launch sequence. So... Once you once you understand that your own sensuality and your own sexual energy activates the launch sequence for your husband, then you know, then you can be you can embarrass some people like Greg and I do. When I <laughs> love like, that. I, I mean, people often assume we're newlyweds, and we'll we're celebrating our twentieth anniversary in two weeks. So, um, I know I've said a lot, so I'm going to stop and let exactly. you. That no, it's beautiful. So first of all, congratulations to you and Greg. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And Thank um, you. I have you brought up. A, yeah, it's it's really beautiful. In fact, one of my questions on we don't have to go directly to this, but I was very curious when I was you know when I was preparing for the interview, how because you do speak about that. I've heard you say that it's like you guys are newlyweds, which is really when you know when you're in a relationship that is um, cultivated from all these places you're talking about. You know, I have seen that with people. They can you can actually create that, and and it actually gets better and better and better. So I'm mm-hmm. um, I I have a couple of questions. I think um, my first question I would love to ask you is for people listening in today who are single and they want to create a beautiful relationship, the kind that you're talking about, the kind that you have created with Greg and that Greg has created with you, um, How? What, what would be the first steps? How would someone go about doing this, both for the woman and for the man? Hmm. Well, it's great because um, this actually ties into what we're talking about. Um, in both directions, what what causes an, an engagement of our of our heart, you know, um, is right. self confidence and authenticity, and then the third quality is passion. Um, the fourth quality, which we should come back to, is receptivity. So the first three qualities are all about you, and then the fourth quality is how you are about another person, which is critical and the one that most women drop out. So for both men and women, you have to start with yourself. You have to start, and I know you already know this, you have to start with being whole, 
Yes. You have to start with not being a black hole. <laughs> um, <laughs> women, like right? Okay. Women and men who walk around, you know, with the attitude "I'm miserable because I don't have a relationship," are never gonna have a relationship because other people pick up on this is someone who will suck the life out of me. Right. And as a man, his reaction to that woman is, I'll never be able to make her happy, right? That's what he'll think, I'll never be, whoa, I'll never be able to make her happy. So a man is, is going to be attracted to a woman who has arranged her life to make herself happy, that she's, which has a couple of components. One is if a woman doesn't have enough sleep, for example, nothing will ever make her happy. So you have to start with a basic level of well-being where you're getting enough sleep, you're moving your body enough, you're getting quality alone time, you're getting attention from the people who bring out the best in you. So start start there. Start with, you know, having a, what men have said over and over again, passion is so attractive, and it doesn't matter what you're passionate about. <laughs> just right. you Just... It really doesn't, just that you have a passion because that's part of what fills you up and has you as you come out into the world whole. And then and then that's what's attractive is the opportunity to partner with someone who isn't in a state of lack. Right. Okay? Right. So for both sense. Yeah, so for both men and women <laughs> You know, the way one man put it was so great. He said, before you ever commit to a relationship, commit to yourself. Like marry, your, marry yourself first. Right. And so if you do that, right, then, then you're going to have the self-confidence, you know, which literally means faith in yourself. Um, you're going to be able to be authentic because you're not always trying to twist and tweak yourself to be what's pleasing to fill that some hole in yourself. Um, you're going to naturally be passionate because there's something in your life where you're expressing that. And and then that makes you available for the, the last quality without which the whole thing blows up. And that's, that's open to other people, open to other people's expression, receptive to how another person is responding to you and expressing that emotional attachment. You know, when he's... When he's showing you that he cares, that you let him. <laughs> right. One of the biggest right. mistakes that men and women make, we don't let other people express their caring for us. We say, oh, no, I don't need that. I don't deserve that. I can handle it myself. We don't realize we're actually shutting people out when we do that. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. And, okay. and as you can see, it ties back together. You have to have actually faith in yourself to allow someone else to do something for you and it not invalidate your self-esteem, not constantly need to be proving you can do everything. Right. That makes a lot of sense. And it, also I know that you talk a lot about um, miscommunication between men and women and a level of confusion. So let's, <laughs> now that you've stepped into receptivity, <laughs> let's talk about that because I know like, um, men and women, we do get very confused by how the other one um, acts and reacts and what, you know, what they're doing that's confusing to me. So let's break down receptivity and how, so let's talk for a woman with, for a man, how we can become more receptive and more understanding of who they are and what they, and what they want. I know one time I, I heard you say this and this was so brilliant, it's that, we, women, as women, we have no clue how priceless the feminine is to men. When I heard that, I was like, oh, my gosh, I never, like, I never thought about it that way because there is so much miscommunication. We don't really understand how priceless we are to them. So can you break that down and talk more about that so, um, so our listeners can really get that? Because I think that <laughs> if we really understood that, we would have much more loving and sweet relationships with each other. Mm. Okay, well, at first I have to say you just asked for a lot. <laughs> Good. 
<laughs> I have a lot of because you want me to talk about, about femininity. You want me to talk about receptivity. You want me to talk. You want me to talk about miscommunication between men and women. So I could do that for minutes. about twelve days. <laughs> <Exactly>. Okay. <laughs> so so let me see if I can hit some highlights, and then you can decide where you want to go from it from there. Um, femininity. Uh, was really the first mystery I encountered when I started studying men in 1991 because because I started listening to men and mostly they wanted to talk about women and and I didn't understand what they were talking about. I didn't know anybody that was like what they were saying. They were talking about women being magical and women being the unicorns in the forest and that when a woman um, truly looks at you, she gives you a part of her spirit and that there's nothing like looking into a woman's eyes and seeing that she accepts you. And they were saying these things, and I'm like, what are they talking about? And and then and then I finally realized that they were talking about femininity, right. and they were talking about a woman's um, something that you know I'll be explaining this weekend. I'm, I'm in Dallas leading our Understanding Women course, but. Women have an a, an extra vital organ right in the center of our chest, um, and it's about the size of the palm of your you know the, your hand. If you spread out your hand and put it in the center of your chest, it's about that big, and it's called our feelings. Right. And and our feelings are a terrific mystery to men because they don't have anything there in the center of the chest. They get indigestion right there. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and their feelings, their their feelings like of happiness or being deeply hurt happen up in their around their clavicle and their shoulders and their neck. So it's they're not in the same place our feelings. And and but this this I always describe this to men as this is the downlink. This is our connection to the eternal that happens here in the center of our chest. And it's where we receive the life force of the universe. It's where we receive our messages. It's where we it's where we know the truth of something. It resonates right there in the middle of our chest. And and this is this is the source of of the the magic of women and femininity that we we actually transmit life force. We we receive it and then we give it back out. It oozes out of our skin. It beams out of our smile. It twinkles and sparkles out of our eyes. Um, it, it we literally recharge men's batteries. But it only happens when we're being feminine, because when we're in man mode, when we're being masculine, we actually have like put our feelings in a vault. <laughs> Right. right, you know the the lead passes down. We we may we're not being receptive to the universe when we're being masculine. We're we're hunting, we're producing, and right. unfortunately, you know, women survive by adapting, and we're spectacular at it. And we do it without even thinking, and we adapt to the values of a relationship or a family or an organization or a community or a society, and and our society values productivity. So right. women have become incredibly productive, which is masculine. Right. Right? So so that's why I didn't understand what men were talking about when they were describing femininity because I was incredibly productive. <laughs> right. <laughs> I spent most of my time being masculine. And, and, and as I listened, I just, oh, my gosh. I mean, they, they say things like... Um, and this is this is a a, a chapter in uh, in Keys of the Kingdom, um, color in a black and white world. Um, that's what they describe it, ma- ma- femininity as. Um, men say that the feminine gives them their purpose. Um, they say they say they would never ever create a world without femininity in it. They say they say the feminine is what makes life worth living. It's what makes everything they do worth doing. They say when a when a woman they care about needs something, now they have a job in life. Wow. <laughs> I could go on and on. They just the the feminine is priceless to them. And it's why they it's why they want to do things for us. Like one man said, 
I want to do everything for my wife that I can do so that she can be everything that I could never be. Wow. Yeah, they yeah, rather we they literally would rather we stood there being this receptacle for life force and the beauty of God and the eternal than put our bags in the car. Yeah. The, to them that's more valuable. That's a really good trait. You stand there and be woman. <laughs> and I will muscle these bags into the car. That to them is they got the better part of the deal. Wow. Right. And and I can see this. I can see how this would be because the masculine needs the feminine and the feminine needs that. You need both of those qualities to make a relationship work. Two two masculine energies and two feminine energies, it's not going to work. So you could see how this dance would would propagate and would be. But it's still shocking for me, and I've heard your work before, to hear those words coming out of your mouth. It's so potent to me to think, Wow, all I have to do is show up as my feminine essence self and radiate the divine of love and heart and beingness. Um, it's almost like poetry. We're giving them poetry. We're giving them artistry. We're giving them that, that deliciousness. And they want to show up and give us everything. I mean, it's like, really? It's that easy? It's not, it's, it really blows my mind. Yeah, and if I if I could, Elizabeth, I'd like to say something about the other side. You're you're totally getting it, and you said something really important, which is the feminine needs the masculine. And a dear friend of mine, whenever I meet with him, <laughs> he always he's always been there for hours before, and yet he wants to know when I'm going to arrive so that he can meet me at the valet, and walk me back to where we're going to be together. And I asked him once, why do you do that? Why don't you just stay and keep working until I write? And he said, because beauty must be escorted. Oh, wow. And when he said that, at first I was like, well, I can escort myself. You know, it's not like we're in a dangerous place. I can walk myself back through the hotel, you know, to the dining room. I can do that. Like, so I had my, you know, feminist reaction. Right. And then I Right? I always do. It's it's ingrained. And I stopped, and then I, like, remembered and felt my body. I felt into my yeah. body the difference between when I walk myself and when I am escorted by a man. And what I realized was that, well, I can certainly walk myself. <laughs> when I am alone... I am my own protector. I am my own warrior. And I may be dressed in a skirt and high heels, but I am being a warrior. I am being on guard. I'm being masculine. And when I am escorted by someone that I know is protecting me, and it could be another woman who's she's being in her masculine protecting me, when I'm being escorted, then what I do is I literally radiate, and that is the beauty that every woman has. I don't care how your features are organized. Mm-hmm. The, the beauty called she's radiant is yeah. available to every single woman, and but we only have it in the presence of the masculine. Mm-hmm. We have to be protected for us to be safe enough to reside in our femininity and radiate. And so, like, back to your question, what should single women do? I recommend if you're going to go, like, say you're going to go out dancing or you're going to go to a bar or something, mm-hmm. have a male friend, zero romantic interest, have a male friend go with you, sit at the end of your end of the bar, keep an eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's keeping an eye on you. You feel the safety of his attention. You will attract so many men who are wondering, who is that man down there? But you're irresistible, so I'm going to risk it. <laughs> wow. And they'll go, why is that guy watching you? Say, he's my friend. He's just protecting me. And they'll be like, whoa. Wow. And then you can just sit there and just be beautiful and be receptive to the men who are like, whoever that is, I have to know her. 
this makes a lot of sense, what you're saying. And it's interesting because I just wrote a book, and what I talk about is the distinction between beauty and radiance. And it's really radiance that women, no matter what age, because what I talk about is how to be undeniable and radiant and beautiful and sexy and youthful at every age. And really oh, that's good for you. Is, Thank you. you for doing that. <laughs> well, because you have to send good. me a copy. Yeah. Do I get recommended I, to people? Thank you. I absolutely will. I absolutely will be. Because what I noticed, because like, like you, I've done my research. I'm almost 54. We're just, about the same, we're just about the same age. I was born in 1959. And what I realized is that men, they don't care what age you are. Age is irrelevant to the conversation. It's how are you radiating the essence of femininity and beauty and deliciousness and all of that. And so um, to me... Um, and what's beautiful about that, and I love, is because women sometimes will have this fear of, of age, oh, I'm getting old, and I'm like, no, don't worry about that. You can attract, you can be 70-something and walk in a room, and every guy's going to turn from the 20-something to the, to the 80 something going to go, who is that? That woman is mm-hmm. undeniable. And so that's, um, so I love this conversation that you're saying. I think it's so important that women hear this, because we can let go of that false idea that the media has been promoting that you have to look in a certain way or walk a certain way or any of those things and just be your delicious self. So thank you for saying this. I, I, I love this conversation. I think this is um I think it's so important for women to hear. Um what's coming up, the question, next question that I'm just tuning into and, and hearing and seeing is because so many women and I know you, you yourself, you, you run a company, and I, and I run my own company. Um, how do women do that balance, that dance between having to be in the masculine and running a company and then shifting over into the feminine so that they can invite the masculine energy to be with them in relationship? That's a great question. Can I amend something you just said, though, that I yes. that I got worried about? Okay, go ahead. In terms of beauty and attraction, age never matters. Age never matters. Okay? Right. But yes. one of the things that, the place that it does matter is when a man is committed to having children. Yes. Okay? Yes. And having children or not having children is always a deal breaker. Right. So a man who has no interest in having a children in children is not going to change. And a man who's committed to having children is not going to change. And a man who's willing to have children with the right person is not going to change. <laughs> so that in that place, her, her age will matter. And that's just something to be to be aware of. So other but right. everything else you said was absolutely true in terms of beauty, attraction, vitality. That's what 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 matters. And yes, yes. Okay, so I just had to say that. So now <laughs> back to your question. I didn't want to steer anybody wrong and have to do right. Elizabeth and Allison said. Um, <laughs> like, and you know what, that's okay. great. I don't know if we'll have time for that today, but that is powerful because when you speak on that, it's, you know, especially because women think, oh, I'll get him to change his mind. He doesn't want kids, but he'll love me so much, so I'll get him to change me. And they're not going to change their mind. And so it's, I'm glad you brought that up about the deal breakers. When there's a deal breaker, just, you know, go, go to the next one because there's nothing to do about that. Yeah, and this is something we talk about in In Sync with Opposite Sex, which is a what we call workshop to go. Um, women think men will change their mind about something when he loves her more because right. she will give up what she needs when she loves him more. <laughs> right. Okay, so, so this is another way that women project that a man is like them. <laughs> Right, and they're not. Their deal breakers right. are actual deal breakers, and it's something really important to pay attention to. But so, do you want me to go back to your question about running companies and whatnot? Yes, and but before we do that, I just want to I want to just really quickly thank our sponsor for the show. So let me quickly just do that. I want to let everybody know that um, the Dr. Elizabeth Show is graciously being sponsored by Pharmacy, and what we mean by that is farming the 
beautiful nutrients of the ocean that are the greatest superfoods on the planet. And what that does, we're talking about being radiant. And a product like this that is 100%, I'm a, I'm a living foods advocate, so a product that is 100% living foods that has been kissed by the light of the sun and nourished by the waves of the ocean, you put something living into your body, and now your body is going to be able to regenerate, uh, rejuvenate, um, be juicy, be sexier, be more beautiful, more radiant. So I just wanted to say thank you to Seabed for our beautiful sponsorship. You can find more about that on at my website, which is www.drelizabeth.com. It's D-R-E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H.com. So now, Allison, let's go back to um, let's go back to that question because I really would love to hear what you have to say about that. Okay, it's a, it's a really good question um, because there's so many women entrepreneurs and um, at all different levels you know, of size of companies and stuff. And it's very exciting and fabulous for our economy. Um, and it, it's going to set up a problem because work is inherently masculine and the workplace and producing results is inherently masculine. And, <laughs> and Joan and I, when we started our company, we decided we were going to do an experiment in running the company from the feminine. And we found out that's a really good way to go broke. Yeah. And <laughs> so we, we've proven that entirely feminine is actually not going to work in a business. In a business, But if, as a woman, you want to be more feminine, um, in and out of work, there's several things you can do. At work... Um, or before work, actually, is pay attention to what are the most important feminine qualities to you. So you've mentioned love and radiance many, many times. So I'm guessing that those have to do with your highest values. And if you look and see what do you need to do in your life so that you walk around embodying love, it's going to be some combination of things that you engage in, some amount of sleep, some amount of movement, certain people in your life that if you just get to talk to them for a few minutes, you are filled with love and then you can, you know, bring love to doing the laundry. So there's there's how you care for yourself so that you can be the qualities of feminine, femininity that you want to be even in the workplace. So you, you get yourself filled up with those feminine qualities. Then in the workplace, I recommend surrounding yourself with people that make you feel safe. So people who, and what that means is that they're going to be pretty masculine. So they're going to be people who, I call them accountability magnets. So they're people who, they're usually pretty hard on themselves, so they're going to need a lot of appreciation, even though they may not seem like it, because they hold themselves to account for everything. They're very responsible. So you have to... You any any inclination you have to save people and want to hire people and give them an opportunity in order to save them, you're going to have to resist that because <laughs> then you'll end up being even more masculine. So you have to surround yourself with people who are highly accountable um, and who make you feel safe because they actually are smarter than you <laughs> in the area in areas that you need. Like hire people smarter than you. They're better at generating structure and problem solving. Even if you're brilliant at it, get people who are even more brilliant. You know, yes. that will that will allow you. You don't. It's a mistake to be the smartest person in the room if you want to be <laughs> feminine. <laughs> it's a mistake to think you're the smartest person in the room if you want to be feminine. So I just I just surround right. myself by really really bright, bright, capable people with strengths that I do not have. And that allows me to be this, you know, creative, um, out-of-the-box little imp, you know, in, in my workplace. Um, then, and then, if you to be feminine outside of the workplace, what you need are transition rituals. Um, so what I mean by that is the, the masculine can't just switch the way the feminine can. When we're being feminine we can switch directions so quickly. Right, yeah. <laughs> we're, just, we're, we're better than any pro basketball player in switching direction and spinning around. Or I mean, we're just, we can just switch ways of being really easily. 
But when we are going to spend a whole day in the masculine, we actually need to transition to the feminine. And so I always coach women, whether you're going out on a date for the first time or you're going out on a date with your husband of 30 years, don't go from work to being with him. Make sure you create a space in the middle where you get to turn back into a girl. And um, and you can do this with, you know, you can do this with changing into sexy shoes, you know, putting on a feminine scarf, listening to, you know, Madonna or Enya or whoever, you know, whatever your range is of music. And a really cool thing that almost nobody knows is that by just pausing for a moment and, like, going, okay, I want to shift into the feminine. It's time now to be feminine. Right. And just consciously thinking that your body has an enzyme that that goes to work, and what that enzyme does is converts the excess testosterone running around in your body, it converts it into estrogen. Mm. Okay. Truly. So you actually become feminine at a biological level by deciding to be. Wow. Isn't that the coolest? That is, that is the coolest. I love that. Wow. So it's just grounding yourself and getting yourself present in the moment and saying, okay, let's shift this, and the body literally physically shifts it. It does it. It's a, it's a miracle. It's wonderful for women. Unfortunately, it has the opposite effect, that same enzyme for men. So when a man is sitting on the couch, he build he's building testosterone, right? And then it's and then it's time to spend it. So this is, this is one of the things I got to learn from John Gray, who whom I adore. We have so much fun together. But he, yeah. so he's all paid attention. You know, some men are from Mars, women are from Venus. He's always paying attention to right. hormones. So a man will build testosterone by doing nothing. Right. He needs to do nothing, right? And then he's ready to spend it, and he's got to spend it. And unfortunately, a woman will see him at that moment and sit down and say, honey, just listen to me, <laughs> which is not, not right a now, good baby. thing. Right. It's a bad thing because that same hormone, when he's ready to spend testosterone, if he doesn't get to, that same hormone will turn his testosterone into estrogen. That same enzyme is turning his testosterone into estrogen. So he is being emasculated at a biological level by sitting there just listening to you. Wow. Well, you know, it's interesting because I heard John in an interview say that. Like like when a man sits down to watch television, let him do it because he's building uh-huh. up his testosterone while he's doing that. So yeah. what I'm saying is that at that moment, you're actually taking from him. If you say, baby, I want to talk to you right now, um, and he's sitting there either watching TV or doing nothing or, you know, whatever he's doing to build up back up his testosterone, you're actually taking from him the necessary testosterone that he needs to build back up to be able to give again. Well, in, in, in a little more precisely, so say he's been sitting there building it and you, you know, you've been respectful of that and then he gets up to do something and you go, honey, just a minute. I just really need you to listen to me for a few minutes. <laughs> um, just the way that you put that is now going to have him be emasculated at the bi- biologically. If you just shift, if she just shifts the way she says that, if she says, honey, I'm, I'm sorry, I know you have something in mind to do right now, but I have a problem. And how you can help me is just let me say the things I need to say and just hold the trash and let me get this alien out of my chest. You, you would really help me if you did that. Could, could you provide that for me? Now, oh, those, brilliant. Can you hear so all those providing. words engage yes. the masculine, right? Yeah. Provide, <laughs> help, save, right? Problem. The, all of those words engage the masculine. So now he's not just listening and turning into girls. Right. Now he's helping you. He's saving you. He's solving a problem by this way that he's listening to you and letting you get this alien out of your chest. And I now he's bending that. the testosterone. Oh, 
that's so good, Allison. I love that. <laughs> I love that. It's just, it's such, it's, it's, it's a small, it's a shift. It's a distinction. It's just a shift. But it makes all uh-huh. the difference in the world. Now he goes, uh-huh. I love that. And you, I love how you always talk about not emasculating um, the man, which makes so much sense. And we don't mean to do it. So I, I, love, I love this concept. I'm going to take this concept, I'm going to put this in my toolbox. This is going in my Allison toolbox. I love this. <laughs> I think that that's amazing. Well, wow. and, I, and I appreciate you pointing it out because it goes back to what we were talking about. When we emasculate men, their testosterone levels fall, crash even. Right. We, we actually can smell it. We smell testosterone. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we measure it. I call it the testosterometer. So we've just emasculated a man. His testosterone levels fall. We register now that he's weak, which is frightening to us. Right. At a primitive level, it's frightening to us. Well, we think we're more comfortable with weak men. It actually frightens our cave woman. Now she has to become the warrior. He's weak. I have to be strong, which means she right. can't be feminine, which there goes her radiance. <laughs> Right. Right. Out there when she become harsh. Right. It's true. And then he's not attracted to her because she's become the masculine. He emascul- she emasculates him, then she mm-hmm. becomes the masculine, and then he's like, I want nothing to do with this, and he goes to play someplace else. Wow. Wow. It's brilliant. Oh, I love this. I, I I love this. I know it's funny because I just want to share this really quickly um, <laughs> because it's so amazing. Um, I have the wonderful opportunity every morning, um, except this morning because I'm here with you, to go to a gym where there's probably and I tell women I said you know you know, it, you know if you want to go have fun and be in the field of a sea of testosterone, just go to a gym. I mean it was like it's five to one men to women and they're all you know, lifting weights and doing their thing. And when you were talking about feeling the testosterone, I walk in there and I get a testosterone high. I walk in there and I'm like, <laughs> And people are like, why do you like to work out so much? I'm like, oh, honey, if you only knew. And, and I, I'm treated so femininely. I'm treated like such a woman. I go in there every single day and they appreciate that there's a woman there. So it's just, it's so fabulous. So I just had I had to share that when you talked about being able to sense and smell the testosterone because I've had that experience. It's it's very very true. So when you brought can up, I, I can love, I say something oh, about what you said? Yes, of course. Yes. I mean, I'm just I'm just smiling over here because unfortunately, women have become afraid of testosterone. You know that when a man is really we call it full of himself that he's actually right. dangerous and something bad will happen. Because we don't understand how strong a man's impulse is to protect us. Mm. And and the way the way that one man put it, which is just brilliant, he said he, he said, You can't tell the difference between wolves and sheep dogs if all you're paying attention to is teeth. Mm. I like that. Right? And women have had right. experiences with wolves that make us yeah. afraid of men. And yeah. then we see every man as a wolf or a potential wolf or he might react and become a wolf. And we can't actually tell. Like you walk into you walk into a gym and you're surrounded by protectors. That's your perception and it's very powerful and you you be feminine and they're protecting you and you feel safe and you get high in testosterone. Yes. Another woman who thinks testosterone is dangerous will walk into a gym and she'll put her guard up. She'll become right. more masculine. She'll be very oh. unconscious thinking the perfection of her body is what matters. And she'll yes. be in misery in the same environment that nurtures you and that I would call right. a testosterone spa. <laughs> it is. It's heaven. It is a testosterone spa. I love that distinction, and you're right. And just by so for her, the other woman, by shifting the which brings up the question I wanted to talk about next, which is the woman feeling safe and a man feeling valued. Um, so for her, is if this is accurate, that is she just can somehow switch from feeling that it's dangerous 
to feeling that it's an environment of safety, she can then relax, let go of the masculine energy and be in her feminine and actually manifest what what I'm manifesting, which is a, a delightful experience. Is that accurate? It It is accurate, and it's what we spend a lot of our time on, whether it's in the Celebrating Men Satisfying Women workshop or it's in the the book that I've worked on for 20 years that mm-hmm. came out in the fall called The Queen's Code, which is only available on the Internet in this very interactive, really fun format. It includes all these videos and everything. Both The Queen's Code and Celebrating Men Satisfying Women are about causing that shift in perception so yeah. that a woman can can literally live in a world surrounded by protectors. So it, whether she's accompanied or not, she experiences being safe and 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 recognizes that, that truly how men are, first of all, they're much better at perceiving wolves than we are. Yes, that's <laughs> they don't true. give wolves the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. We, we try to rehabilitate true. wolves, right? Men do not. They're like, stay away from that guy. He's no good. So, yes. so you can start to trust that the the small percentage of wolves that they are, all the rest of the sheep dogs will protect you from them if mm-hmm. you let them. Love that. You know what? It's so interesting, Allison, and I want you to continue with this. Literally, physically, in my body, when you say, when you said, when you talked about protectors, and you said surrounded by protectors, my physical body, like the physiological, a physiology of my body, literally went. Oh, it, it really huh. relaxed. I went, oh, like that, that thought of being surrounded by protectors and the man wanting to protect and make me feel safe had a beautiful, relaxing effect on my body. So you can just, mm. it, the truth, the resonance of truth in what you are saying is so deep. It, like it brings tears to my eyes. It's like, oh, I feel it in my heart space. Like, this is so true. This is like this is like a, a spiritual truth. Mm. Thank you. You're that. welcome. Can I can I elaborate? Please, I would love you to. I would love you to. <laughs> well, you earlier you brought up miscommunication, and mm-hmm. most miscommunication between men and women comes because we assume we're talking to someone like us who uses words the same way as us and means the same thing by words and that they're motivated the same way. So so women don't trust men to protect them because the the downside of us acting on our feelings, which is the source of our truth so they seem like they should be acted upon, is that is that we'll protect another person based upon how we feel about them. So, okay. so if we're if we like them and we love them, then we'll extend our own protection to them. If we don't like them, you know, if we're mad at them at the moment, we will not protect them. We may even betray them. And so we assume that men are like that. And this is why we are always trying to please men, you know, pro- like me and protect me, okay, okay, you like me now, you like me now, you like me now, right, 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 protect me, protect me. Because <laughs> we assume we're dealing with a woman and we don't know that actually a man's relationship to his feelings, which is that he doesn't trust them, and he, an honorable man is one who does the right thing no matter how he feels, that for a man, he... Him liking you or not, him being pleased with you or not at this moment, him even knowing you or not is irrelevant. Wow. It, he will protect, the way wow. one man put it is, I will protect everyone within reach. Wow. And not because of who you are, but because that's who he is. He Ooh, is a protector. That. Oh, say that again. That is so powerful. Say that again. I just I, I want everybody <laughs> to hear that. That's just that lesson. That's so deep. Yeah, men protect women because of who they are. 
It's part of who they are. They will protect anyone within reach. They don't even have to know you, let alone like you or be pleased by you or attracted to you in order to protect you because it's who they are. And the brilliance of that is when I hear this as a woman, it lets me off the hook from trying to do that tap dance of like me now, so you'll protect me, please like me now, I'll have to do this, mm-hmm. let me please, you let me, that you can let all that go because a man who's not the wolf but really, you know, but the sheep is going to protect you no matter what based on his yes, essence of who he is. It's what sheepdogs do. And ninety seven percent of men are sheepdogs. And again, this returns us back to this returns us back to then you can be authentic. Yes. Right? Exactly. So back to the beginning of our conversation. If you're not contorting yourself to be pleasing so that a man will protect you, if you understand he just already will protect you, then you can be yourself. Oh, and and the the reaction of that in my body again is just like, oh thank God, like just to be able to be <laughs> myself. Oh my God, wow, that would be really fun. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, so Allison, I'm just uh, right now. I have to ask on behalf of my whole audience, all, all this beautiful community that that we are, um, to invite you back because I'm looking at the time and it's. 10 o'clock already, and I know you have to go teach, and, and um, our time here is complete for today. But this, I mean, we didn't even get to sex. We didn't even get to picking the sheep dog <laughs> instead of the wolf. We didn't get to a lot of things, and I ask any people, I know people have questions. So would you, would you come back again so we can have a part two conversation? Yes, I would be oh. happy to. I would and, really and if they can't wait, I mean, truly, a lot... We have so much information available at understandman.com, a ton of it just for free. So they, they don't have to wait, and, and I would be happy to come back. Oh, and, perfect. And also just please beware of Valentine's Day and setting men up to lose. Valentine's Day is a nightmare for most yes. men. They cannot yes. win at all. They have to spend so much energy just to get to zero. So if you want to do something loving for a man, let him off the hook for Valentine's Day. Oh, I love it. Is there anything else you want to say about that before we go? Because I think that that's very important. Well, you have to understand that men measure the expenditure of energy and what it's going to give in return. And it's a Thursday night, for gosh sakes. He's in the middle of his work week. He has to spend a ton of money just for you to not be upset which is just <laughs> such a waste to him. It's such a waste. They hate Valentine's Day. I mean, there's a few who love it and get really right. creative, but most of them just hate it. Yeah. Spon- men men equate romance with spontaneity. Mm. And it's spontaneity literally means that you get to create from within yourself. And Valentine's Day is the opposite. It's a date on the calendar that they have to now march to. And they hate it. Yeah. And if you just, you know, I know a woman who, after she learned this, she wrote on a note. And she went to her husband and she said, I've really thought about what I want for Valentine's Day. And I've written it down so you don't forget. Can I give it to you? And he looked at her like, oh, God. Right? (laughs) And then she handed him the note, and he he opened it up, and it said, a kiss. Oh. And he just looked up, and his whole body, you know, you can feel it in mine, right? His whole body just flooded with relief. His eyes teared up. He just, that was such a loving act on her part, to release him from the charade. Right. This 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 the, this uh, media created um, event to that says you have to do this and or and then to just spend money and do all sorts of jump through hoops and do all sorts of things. I yeah, love it's a it's a retail that. event and and most people don't even know that there were three Saint Valentines. None of them had anything to do with romance at all. Um, and but the Catholic Church gave them February 14th as their day. That was their saint's day, was February 14th. And then hundreds of years ago, Chaucer wrote a poem 
about halfway through the month of February, birds find their mate and suggested, oh. wouldn't it be great if lovers exchanged tokens on the same day? Right. That's where this whole hullabaloo came from. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Yes. A poem and unrelated Catholic saints <laughs> created a, a, a disaster. A train and wreck. That make, a train make wreck. single women feel like crap, right? Make single right. women feel like crap. Make men newly dating having to strategize how to survive Valentine's Day with insufficient context. You know, make men in, in committed relationships have to figure out how were they going to match what they did last year. Mm. Please end the suffering. Yeah. I'm babysitting for a friend on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I, I do have to go. I love that. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Allison. I'm so I'm so excited, and I'll definitely be in communication with you, and we'll put something on the calendar again soon. Thank you so much for being here. This was just it was so delightful and so fun, and um, I love the work that you're doing here in the world, and I, I just love um, I love how we played together today. It was very very fun. So thank you for being here. It was here. wonderful for me too. Yeah. Thank you for being yeah, so receptive. Oh, I'm so All right. Thank you. All right, Allison, take care. Bye. Bye. So I wanted to thank everybody for being here today. Thank you so much. I want to thank our sponsors. Thank you, Pharmacy and CVED, for providing um, the sponsorship for the Dr. Elizabeth Show. Um, I invite you to go to www.drelizabeth.com and check out all the wonderful products that help you to be absolutely radiant, feminine and beautiful and uh, we will see you next week there will be an encore presentation of this show on wednesday the next wednesday the 13th of february and i invite you to go to drlizabeth.com for more information on allison's programs and her products so take care everybody we will see you next wednesday at 3 p.m all right ciao You have been listening to an Awakening Zone presentation. Human Empowerment Radio and Media for the 21st Century and Beyond.